How are you, Maury? I'm terrific. Thanks, <laughs> Natalie. I appreciate your having me tonight. I'm so happy that you could join us, and I'm really excited to be able to share some of this amazing research that you've done with everyone that's here on the webinar. So let's start with you telling us a little bit about what brain entrainment really is. Okay, well, you had a pretty good handle on it when you explained it earlier. With brainwave entrainment, you're able to access brainwave states that make learning and belief change 100 times easier. How brainwave entrainment works, basically, is that it takes advantage of a natural process in your brain called the frequency following response. Basically, your brain wants to tune into rhythms of what's around you. This is why listening to pop music with a good beat is a lot more enjoyable than, say, random jackhammer noise without any steady structure. Now, with brainwave entrainment, we take the same concept of following the frequency of what your brain naturally does, and we use it to sync it into states that make learning and personal change so much easier and more powerful. We use beats and frequencies that match your ideal brainwave state. Then we make the cells of your brain, otherwise known as neurons, fire at specific frequencies. When this happens, you release these different neurochemicals and endorphins. As these chemicals get distributed through your brain, mind, and body, you feel and act differently. Even if it's on its own, brainwave entrainment is wonderful and healthy for your brain. Now, when you combine it with other self-development tools, the results are outstanding. Wow. Okay, Maurice, so basically what you're saying that if we were to combine something like brainwave entrainment with affirmations, that would make the affirmations more effective? <laughs> They're much, much more effective. You can look at it this way. As an example, if a farmer were to plant rows of corn in the desert sand, not much is going to happen. But if a farmer plants those same seeds in fertile earth that's well mineralized with lots of vitamins and water, then you're going to get corn as high as an elephant's eye, as they used to say. <laughs> right. Okay. Now, Mori, earlier we were talking about alpha, beta, and theta brainwaves. So can you elaborate a little bit on how we can access these higher states even without brainwave entrainment? Okay, sure. It's actually pretty straightforward. When we're speaking of alpha, beta, theta waves, we're actually speaking about a dominant brainwave frequency. In reality, different areas of your brain are always putting out multiple frequencies at the same time. But when we're talking about being an alpha, that means that my dominant frequency is alpha at that moment. Now, when you release different neurotransmitters, it activates different things. For instance, in theta, you release a hormone called LTP. This stands for long-term potentiation. And without that particular hormone in your brain, almost everything you learn goes literally in one ear and out the other. Children exist primarily in the theta wavelength. That's why they learn more easily than adults, because they're always producing this hormone. Things go into their head and are imprinted there and come back when they need it. Brainwave entrainment has been shown to increase neural pathways, literally creating more physical neural pathways in your brain. So to say it more simply, it's similar to a road map with express highways. As an example, if you have trouble figuring out things like directions or math, chances are that in your brain there's a long, complicated neural pathway for the right information to get to your conscious mind. When you build a new neural pathway, it's like creating an express route that you can easily access anytime. This works with simple things like being happy, as well as useful skills like knowing the right thing to say at the right time when you're socializing, say with someone new. If you find you get tongue-tied a lot, this would be especially helpful for you. Right, right. Because as I was saying, children between the ages of 2 and 6 are predominantly theta brainwave activity. And apparently that's where we pick up a lot of our programming. You know, that uh, children observing behavior of their parents and people around them. And there's no filter for judgment for them. So let's say, for example, that, you know, their mother is freaking out when she sees a spider. And she's got the newspaper and she's banging the spider and she's like, ah! And the child looks at the mother and goes, okay, note to self, that's how I act when I see a spider. You know, they pick up that programming and through repetition, it becomes a, a behavior. Is that how it works? That's exactly how it works. Right. It's the same process anytime you see a kid running. They fall and the first thing they do is look up at mommy. If mommy's laughing, the kid gets up and laughs. If mommy's freaking out, oh my God, honey, what's wrong with you? Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> then the yeah. kid always starts crying. Right. Now, the nice thing about using a treatment is that when we incorporate it with other modalities, say like affirmations, subliminal audios, you can give yourself that same experience that a three to seven-year-old might have. You can do that now. 
as an adult at any age because the entrainment will actually bring your brain into that exact same state that a child has and allow you to change your programming. It's kind of like a hypnotic induction, but on a very, very deep level, much deeper than any hypnosis, actually. It takes any skill you want to learn and makes it much more sharp and makes any type of personal change that much easier.